Welcome back, Tigers. This is the first video in our Salesforce email and calendar integration series. In this video, we will show you how to enable Einstein Activity Capture and set up your users to sync emails and events in minutes. Einstein Activity Capture has come a long way over the years. The product was a hard sell at first due to all of its limitations, but finally I feel like this solution contains almost all of the features we are looking for when it comes to syncing emails and events from Gmail or Outlook. And it's included in all Salesforce editions at no additional cost. Let's go check out what Einstein Activity Capture has to offer. Here we are in Salesforce and our first step is to go into setup. We're gonna to go to permission sets. And the first permission set we're gonna to go to is called Standard Einstein Activity Capture. Now this is the name that's used for this permission set in Enterprise and Professional Edition. In Performance and Unlimited, I believe it has the word included on the end, so just be aware of that if you are on those editions. We're gonna manage assignments and we're gonna add this to a couple of users here. Next, we're going to also add the sales engagement basic user. Now the sales engagement basic user is going to have some sales engagement permissions in it. And it's also going to give the user access to inbox. So that's why we are assigning this because we are going to need inbox permissions in future videos. Now there's a couple of other settings that we're going to check. If you are testing this in a sandbox environment, which I encourage you to do so first so that you can understand how this is gonna work. The setup is really easy, so it just makes sense for you to test it out in a sandbox. So we're gonna go to deliverability and you'll just wanna make sure that this is set to all email in your sandbox. The other settings that you wanna check are in your activity settings. You will want to make sure that allow users to relate multiple contacts to tasks and events is enabled. The reason for this is because whenever the event syncs from the user's calendar to Salesforce, there could be more than one attendee on it and you want Salesforce to be able to capture that. So we highly recommend enabling that feature. Next, we're going to go to object manager. We're going to go to the event object. We'll go to the page layout. And then we're going to add the attendees field to the layout. And then we'll go to related lists and we're going to add the name field to the related list. And we'll save that. Next, you want to make sure that you have enhanced email turned on. We'll go to enhanced email and just make sure that it says disable here. That means that you have it enabled. Now we are ready to start enabling Einstein activity capture. We're going to go to Einstein Activity Capture and click on Settings, click Get Started. And you'll want to make sure that you review these terms. Make sure you re read all of this and make sure that you're able to accept the terms that are in this agreement. Then we'll click Try Einstein. Then you need to choose what your email and calendar service is. This video is going to be for Google G Suite. And then we're going to do it at the user level. We're going to call this sync events and emails. I'm going to disable contacts. We just typically don't see companies allowing contacts to be synced because your personal contacts, if you have them in your work email, will sync into Salesforce. Then we usually sync just Google Suite to Salesforce, not Salesforce to Google Suite. We've seen issues happen with Outlook where if somebody edits the calendar invite in Salesforce, it updates the invite in Outlook and sends an email to a meeting that a prospect maybe has declined or maybe they asked not to be reached out to again. So we just like to control this sync direction so that it goes one way from our calendar to Salesforce only. Then here's where you choose how far back you wanna go when syncing the emails to Salesforce. You have a lot of different options here. You can go back up to 180 days. Then for events, you have the same option. So you can decide how far back do you want to sync events. So we're gonna go back 30 days. You can go back up to 180. Then you can leave this unchecked for syncing private events. This could be something personal that a user has on their calendar. 
You want to sync event series and remove deleted events. You know, this is pretty important when somebody deletes an event from Google, do you want it to be deleted from Salesforce? That's up to you. Maybe you want to leave it there and have them mark it as canceled and then relate synced events to Salesforce records. That's the whole point of doing this is we want to prevent our sales teams from having to enter their meetings into Salesforce manually. So when a contact matches multiple contacts in Salesforce, what do we want the sync to do? So this comes into play when you have duplicates in Salesforce. If you have a contact that exists twice, which contact record do you want Salesforce to choose? So you can say, I want the one with the most recent activity or the most recent updated date. This is up to you on your personal preference within your company. Here is where you're going to see all of the users that you assigned a Einstein Activity Capture license to. Now you'll see that these users have Einstein Activity Capture and Inbox. The Inbox comes from that sales engagement permission set that we assigned. So once you move these users over to the selected, that means they've been enabled for Einstein Activity Capture and they can sync their calendar and email. So here we can see a summary of the connection that we just set up to Salesforce. In the configurations tab, you can see the configuration we just set up and you can see that we can set up more than one configuration. So if you have a team that's kind of worried about syncing emails, you can just set up a sync that's only going to sync their events. I highly encourage you to talk to your revenue teams who are concerned about syncing their emails to Salesforce. All the teams that I've worked with, they have been really scared of turning this on at first. And then they ended up absolutely loving it a couple of months into go live. And it's because they see the productivity increase. They see they don't have to update their meetings manually in Salesforce. They can see everything right from their opportunities and contacts and the emails are threaded. So the activity history doesn't get as muddled as you think and you can filter the activity history in Salesforce. So I would highly recommend that you encourage your teams to at least sync both events and emails to save them time and to get all that communication on the records in Salesforce. If a sales rep leaves, their inbox leaves with them. And all of that history around that deal, around the customers that they're working with is not captured in Salesforce unless you have this sync turned on. Now in this configuration, you can come and edit it at any point in time. And this is also where you'll come to add additional users. So if you have a new user that comes onto uh, Salesforce, you assign them the permission set, they will show it in the available list here and you just add them to the selected and then they'll automatically start getting Einstein activity capture settings to sync their events and their emails. On the settings tab, this is where you have the option to enable and disable several different things. This Einstein activity capture is just whether it's enabled or disabled, we want that enabled. Records that activities are added to, by default, it's already gonna add them to accounts, contacts, leads, person accounts, and opportunities. You have the ability to select contracts as well. The activities dashboard, this is not gonna be available after June 6, 2025. So we are not going to enable this. We are not going to show you how to use this. If you already have this enabled, you're using activity reporting 360 and all your records are going into AWS, your emails are not showing up in your activity reports. We won't cover any of that. We're gonna have a video where we cover Salesforce's new features that they will be supporting because the activity 360 reporting is being deprecated as of right now in the summer 26 release. Down here is where you can get an email or in-app notification if there's an issue with any of your users connected accounts. You'll only receive a notification every seven days. Down here is where you can say the default activity sharing for new users. So you can edit the default. This is where we set that up when we set up the configuration. And then here we can say activity sharing is shared with non Einstein activity capture users. This means for some of maybe your senior leadership, maybe they don't have Einstein activity capture and you want them to be able to see the emails that are coming from your sales reps, BDRs and SDRs. You will need to make sure you have this enabled. Now, a lot of people choose not to sync internal events. Events are considered internal when all attendees are part of the internal domain. So that is up to you whether or not you want those to sync. If you are going to use some of the features that we're gonna show you in some future videos, like sharing meeting availability, we highly recommend that you do sync internal events because that is what's going to block your calendar for that time. Here's where we can say whether or not we want to include Google Meet details on Google Events. 
and enable that. We can show synced and captured events on the Salesforce calendar. So this means, do you want any events that are synced to Salesforce to also show on the user's calendars? And the answer is yes, if you want to be able to leverage the meeting availability features that we're going to show you in a future video. Here are some additional email settings where we can prevent automated email replies from being shared, prevent sensitive emails from being shared. So I would enable both of those as well. We come over to excluded addresses. This is all of the addresses that we identified in that configuration screen. You can add those at any point in time as you get additional addresses from your teams. Now we're gonna come back over here and we'll see that now we've enabled Einstein Activity Capture. We have a couple of other sections. We have status and metrics and we have Einstein Email Insights. If we go to status and metrics, this is where we'll see how many people that we have configured for Einstein Activity Capture, and then how many people have activated their account. So nobody has currently connected their account. This is where you can monitor that. And you can see which configuration your users are on and whether or not they've connected, the last email synced, how many events synced, contacts synced, all that good stuff. And then you can also see if there's any issues here with your syncing. So I have an error here that says remote connection issue folder is not found in Google G Suite. And so this is affecting two users. And we can also see the sync times and how long it's taking. So we will show you that as we connect our first user here. Now we've logged in as Lila Pouncer, and you will see that Lila has a bar here up at the top that she can click this link to connect her email and calendar. Now, if you have a user who clicks the X and says, no, I don't see the banner to enable Einstein Activity Capture, they can still go to their avatar, click settings, click connected accounts, go to email and calendar accounts, click new account, and then this is where they can connect their Google account. So make sure you review all of these privacy policies. All right, now you'll see that we have our connected account and Lila has successfully connected Einstein Activity Capture. And now it's going to take some time for all of her emails and her events to sync to Salesforce. Depending on how many records a user has, it could take 24 to 48 hours. All right, it's been about five to seven minutes. It's been super quick and we can see records already coming into Salesforce for Lila. So first we're gonna go in and we're going to check out her calendar. So we can see here all of her events have synced from her Google Calendar. You'll wanna make sure that your sales reps verify that it all matches. And we can see that she's got a doctor's appointment here. Highly recommend that they even sync their private appointments due to some features that we're gonna show you in a future video. We're gonna to go to a contact that we know has emails and events. And this is how you're going to cross check and make sure that everything's syncing successfully. So we can see that we have a couple of meetings over here that have synced. We can see that we have a couple of emails. We can tell that they've synced from Einstein Activity Capture because there's a globe here that tells us that it's being shared with everybody. And so if we click into the email, we can see that we have a nice related records section over here. We can manage the associations manually, but we can see that Salesforce has automatically found the account record, Janet's contact record, and an opportunity. So Salesforce is going to sync any email that's associated with a person, and that person is in the opportunity contact role with that opportunity, which is super awesome. And if a contact is on multiple opportunities, the email is going to show on all open opportunities where Janet is in the opportunity contact roles. So another reason why opportunity contact roles are so crucial to Salesforce. Now we can manage the associations manually. We can add additional ones. We can remove associations. So maybe this email doesn't have anything to do with this opportunity. Janet can choose to remove the association and click save and it will remove that email from the opportunity. You can also add accounts, opportunities, leads, and contacts to this email manually. So you can choose to add Midnight Bell, 
I'm gonna click save there. And now that email will show on Midnight Bell's contact record. All right, so those are the features from the email record. Now you can also manage the associations from here. So you can click remove record association. So that means it's going to remove the email from Janet's contact record. Manage associations will just take you into that email. Now you can also see that the emails are being threaded here. We can see that there was a reply to this email. So you're not going to see one record for each email that's syncing over to Salesforce, which is nice. And you can also choose to filter your activity settings. So if you just want to look at all of your events, you can to see all of your meetings that you've had with a particular person. Just in case a, a lot of emails are related to this contact, you do have the ability to drill down when you need to. Now let's look at our events. So we can see over here that we have this event that has synced to Salesforce, it has the attendees. In the details section, we can see who has accepted and who has declined the event. And then in the related, we'll be able to see a list of the attendees. This is just nice to see if you have a lot of people that are listed on the event. Now there's a couple of things that I wanna mention when it comes to events syncing from your Outlook or Gmail calendar over to Salesforce. If you have a scenario where there's people added to the Gmail Email or Outlook calendar event after the event has synced to Salesforce, they're not going to be added to the event in Salesforce. So that is something that we have confirmed with support. The attendees are only added to Salesforce if they exist on the meeting at the initial time of sync. Same goes if somebody was removed from an event in Gmail or Outlook, that person will not be removed from the event in Salesforce. So just keep in mind if one of your users said, my unsigned activity capture isn't syncing, that's one of the rabbit holes that you could go down, you can say, well, was this person added after the meeting was created in your calendar? And if the answer is yes, that's the reason why they're not showing and they will need to manually associate this event to that contact. And they can just do that right here at the name field. They can add additional people right here. Now, another thing that I've seen happen is we have a lead and a contact, both with the same email address. I've seen the lead show in the attendees here, and then the contact shows in the name here. So that gets confusing when you see different people in the name versus the attendees or, or different records. You'll see one lead, one contact. Now, whatever's in the name field is what's gonna show up in your activity reports. So that's what's more important. And Salesforce does prioritize contacts over leads. So that's why the name field is going to contain that contact. But just be aware of that. If you see that happen, I've, I've seen that happen before. If you do have duplicates within your org. Now in the event that Salesforce can't find a match for your event, they can't find any contact that has the existing email address that's on the attendee in your calendar, what's going to happen is it will sync it over to your unresolved items. Very rarely do people manage this, but I'll show you where that is. If you go to email and my unresolved items, and then you go to events, you'll be able to see all of the events that have synced over that don't have a match. So you would have to look up the account or contact from this list. You can also look up a lead and then save that and it will link that email to that record. All right, and that is it for setting up Einstein Activity Capture for your users. Hope you guys get a lot of productivity out of this awesome feature. That's it, that's a wrap. Be sure to subscribe to Blue Tiger Academy so you don't miss out on the next video in this series. We're going to show you how to set up the Gmail integration that allows users to access a feature-rich Salesforce side panel in Gmail. Let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you'd like to see a video on a different Salesforce topic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.